So this roof clam section here is basically a spider. And you'll see that when we remove it because it has different areas which spider over the car. Um, and I'm gonna try and find another spanner because that's not doing me any favors. So we're gonna use an impact driver to whack down with a hammer. And as we whack it down, we're gonna turn our hands in an anti-clockwise way. And this is exactly what we don't like, flatheads. Flatheads are not our friends, guys. I'm gonna skip my breaks, I'm gonna make mistakes. I'm gonna skip my breaks, I'm gonna make mistakes. I'm gonna skip my breaks, I'm gonna make mistakes. Look at beautiful stars, I wanna drive a faster car. Hi guys, and welcome to this episode of Make or Break. Today, we are going to be tackling the spider. We've already tackled the snake at the back, and now we're going to the spider. So for you guys at home that don't know, the spider is what they call the roof clam, okay? So this roof clam section here is basically a spider, and you'll see that when we remove it because it has different areas which spider over the car. Um, these cars also can hide a roll cage in here, which we're possibly looking at doing because I'm a little bit of an idiot of a driver. So if I roll this car in any way, shape or form, I would like to protect my face, not my hair. Right, Josh, so what we got? So we got these little flat screws, okay? So here is like a, um, an eight mil stud, probably American or UNF or UNC, and it's a flat headed bolt. Okay, there's a couple of problems with it being a flat head. Ivan's done a lovely job because these can be countersunk and hidden, and therefore when the rain comes down here, it runs off absolutely lovely, okay? But a countersunk flat head, is an absolute nightmare for its integrity of strength. Because when you um, have any water sitting here, it corrodes the head and therefore makes it very, 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 very hard to undo, as you're gonna see now. So Josh has been working very hard. He's undone a few of these as it goes. And basically these hold it down onto the, um, the chassis basically, right? Yeah, onto the, top of the, onto the top of the box section bulkhead, which you can just about see yep. underneath, the, underneath the screen. So what a couple of things I've noticed here, okay? So if we just head over to that side there, um, these two bolts in the corner here, which you assume just hold the clam to the, um, the chassis, also hold the top mount of the, the spring hinge. So basically, the hinge is the bolt that runs all the way through the middle of the door itself, but it's actually also adjustable in a complete axis. So, you know, forward and backwards and backwards and forwards are the same thing, and I'm repeating myself, but it doesn't, I don't mind. And what we're gonna do again, guys, is obviously repeating the obvious, we're gonna put the bolts and the nuts back through our brackets, okay, so that we can make sure that we don't lose any. I'll put the flat screwdriver down somewhere and that is a bit tight. Taut, like a twiger. Here it is. So we're gonna remove them and all, so they have a dual purpose, these screws. Not only do they hold the body to the chassis itself, but they also held the top door hinge in place, which is fantastic, bit of an engineering. Um, guys, put a comment in the, um, section below if you think that that's an original fixture of the 60s cars or if that is an Ivan special or a kit car or recreation special. So maybe we put the door hinges back through those so that we um, know. So that's two of our bolts out. We've got a, another bolt out here, which is another one. Like I say, you can see the wear just in the head. Basically, with a flat screwdriver, you want to push it in as far as you can. But because of the wear, okay, it's actually damaging the face of the screw. So it is going to make it very, very hard for us. And straight away, you can already feel there is a bit of flex there, which is good. I'm going to tackle, um, he's got a couple of bolts at the back. If you want to have a look at that, we've got a couple of bolts at the back there. Oh, he's a bit taut. No, notice I went for the bolts and not the flathead screws. So. I did see that. You left me with the, <laughs> with the screws. Right, I'm gonna do the same this side. I've got a couple of 13 mil. You got a span down there or are you using a ratchet? I've got a spanner and a ratchet spanner. Uh, you may have a little bit of luck with a ratchet. If not, I'm gonna give it have a go. to I'm just gonna crack off. off these captive nuts that are holding the door hinge in place. And they are loose, which is lovely. Oh, fantastic these. So Josh is gonna tell me that he's already undone these and he's making me look good, probably. <laughs> we could be lucky and they could all come undone. If they all come undone, that is famous last words. You know that, right? I'm saying it because I'm fairly certain they're probably not gonna all come <laughs> undone. 
But uh, with any luck, they'll all come undone, if not most of them will come undone. Yeah. And it should be off in a relatively quick time. I'd imagine there'll probably be an element of uh, some kind of Sikaflex or, or silicon seal underneath. Stop the water coming in, obviously. Yeah, I'm just, I can just about see some overspill of it here. What um, you'll notice as well... A good, a good pull and, it, and it'll, yeah. it'll soon come off and then we'll just, we'll just raise a scraper off the bottom. No worries. Or what? I can leave it and give you paint guys something extra to do. <laughs> what we'll also notice, guys, is um, these captive... They're not captive nuts, OK? You've got a washer and that underneath here holding the top hinge in place. Um, we are struggling to turn the top of the screw because uh, we don't want to round the bolt off. So what I'm doing here is we'll undo the nut from the bottom, leaving the screw in. Um, but then basically what we can do is use a copper hide hammer. You don't want to damage the, uh, the stud. And we'll just give them a little tap and that will knock both the bolts out. We've got a few harder ones in place. And what we're going to use is a tool called impact driver. And what the impact driver does is it actually forces the, um, the nut round, so you can get a, quite a nice turn on it. Um, and I'm going to try and find another spanner because that's not doing me any favours. So we're going to use an impact driver to whack down with a hammer. And as we whack it down, we're going to turn our hands in an anti-clockwise way to try and help move that bolt round. And uh, yeah, it's going to be lots of fun. Some of you American viewers out there may think that we are still using, um, you know, half inch spanners and stuff, but we use metric 13 mils and 10 mils. And um, there's a couple of things I'm going to uh, put to bed on here, guys, as well. Um, the Americans still think that all our cars are in kilometers per hour on our dash. We're yeah. miles, baby. Hence, this is a GT40 made in the 60s that's got a mileometer as opposed to a kilometer. Right. Are you sticking with that? What? Kilometer. That's, that's the word. The word of the day, kilometer. So, copper hide hammer, okay? They call it a copper hide hammer because one side's copper, one would be a leather hide. And um, these bolts in here are completely rusted in place. So, when I tried to use my screwdriver to turn them, we dug out the rust that was in the hole and they just weren't moving. So, with a little tap, I'm hoping... They're going to come out. Doesn't look like they want to play ball. I take Please the door. be careful not to damage my hammer. <laughs> okay, that's not on the plan at all. all. That because I've even done something silly there, which everyone at home is going to tell me I'm an absolute plunker bent over. We should be able to just take lift it up because the bolts come through, but they're not even coming out. They're rusted in that much, we may have to drill them out. Um, but yeah, I'll give them that a tap from down here. And she's not... There is a small chance that they've tapped a thread, he's tapped a thread into this bulkhead bar. So you could be trying to beat a threaded in bolt through. I think you might even be right there. So we might have to run a hacksaw. That's why you're paying me the big bucks. Well, how do <laughs> Um, have a look on that side. Oh, let me have a quick look. A, I love this man's thinking. Well, that one's, yeah, it's got threads. Oh, well, there you go. I look like an absolute idiot. So, guys. You wound those ones out, too. I did, but they fell out, like, really, really nicely. So, these bolts are completely seized in. And, uh, obviously, for the real reason that he's just said. Because they are threaded through the chassis and nutted underneath. Um... We should what? be able to, if you can bend it somewhat straight, I have done. Uh, we'll have to I, cut the I may well be able to clamp something onto it, weld the nut onto the end of it or something. Well, I'm going to get use... it winding, and yeah. then I'll cut the nut off. I'm going to use the. Out. I wanted to use the impact driver. But it's very close to the windshield. Yeah, I, I, I want to use the impact driver as little as possible because one, windscreen at the front. Yeah. Two, even at the back, you've got these two at the top of the bulkhead, which yeah. I don't know how well they're going to come undone. I don't want to give it too much physic. Because it is only fiberglass. Exactly. Um, well, I don't want to start cracking, okay. chipping, so on and so, so right, forth. So, right, let's move backwards a little bit. And we're going to undo these rear bolts that he started to do on the back here as well. Give him a hand. Um, so, we've got two bolts either side at the back. We've got two in the top and a selection around the front. Lots of fun. Too many jobs on the go. Have you got nuts under? Well, they're just bolts. Yeah, I've got nuts underneath. You're going to have to take the alley panel off, I think. Yeah. Um, Probably take the fuel pumps off, alley panel. 
There was me thinking this was going to be a nice quick little job. Yeah, there was me saying that um, we're hoping... Well, because the fronts were threaded, yeah. I was hoping that the 13s at the back were We're going to struggle here. So, can you not get your nuts out then? You've got to take the alley panels off. I think you? I'm going to take the alley panel off, yeah. Well, um, I might be able to reach if I can... Depends on how much room there is under here. Have you got a flat here? I don't know if that's going to be too big. I might have to go and find another one. Oh, she's going. We might have to raid the snap. So these inspection panels here, I believe, are hiding the uh, fuel sender units, which basically send a signal to the driver's display to tell you what the fuel level is. And they shouldn't be here. They should be uh, halfway down the car on a Mark 1 and a Mark 2. But obviously, when we assess the real car, we'll be able to find out if that is the case. Um, yeah, we're going to need a smaller McFlew screwdriver. Uh, I think we're going to have to drill out some of these screws as well. So the um, fuel tanks themselves are hidden uh, by these fiberglass panels either side. We got there. Little, you need to do your one first. That one, if you want it. Thank you very much. I'll get mine first. Just want to get these three off, and then I'll have a look underneath Love the me. sender. And this is exactly what we don't like: flatheads. Flatheads are not our friends, guys. I can assure you, this car is not going to go back together with flatheads. Allen keys are quite nice. We like Allen keys, don't we? Yeah, um, again, that's one of the small things that if we can go and look at an original, would be handy to see. To see what, what it, it would have had originally. Because they probably wouldn't have used Allen heads. No. Um, but then we don't really want to go with the flatheads either. No. I want to try and use all stainless steel if possible. Right, there you go. If you look over there, you can have that screwdriver off you. You can see the sender unit, okay? The sender unit is exactly what it says on the tin. It sends the signal of the fuel level to the gauges. And we can easily relocate them to where they would be on the original car, hopefully, as well. So You might be lucky. We might be lucky. I might just about be able to thread a spanner under there. Yeah? There we have it. And a uh, couple of things, just thread your nuts back in your, your bolts, back in your holes, so you don't lose them. I'm not too worried about losing the nuts on the bottom of the bulkhead. I mean, the, the bolts that hold our sender unit cover on. Yeah, I'm not too worried about losing those either. Just put them, if you can just open another tub. I've just twiddled them back in for now. I can say yeah. all, of the, all of those small uh, alley paneling nuts and bolts, I'm just gonna leave all in a tub, just so that we know how many there were, more, yeah. more than anything, because we're going to replace them anyway, so. So. Have you found, can you get on it, can you? Hopefully. Oh, I'll come around and give him a hand. Teamwork makes the dream work, right? If you say so. Do you want, to, do you want me to get a gun on there? I don't think you'll reach one. Well, no. you, if you can get two long 3 8 extensions. That's what I'm thinking. Um, I don't know if there's two out. You might have to go in my box and get them. But that is. I've got some. You got a 13 mil socket out. Yes, on the magnet tray. There should be a shallow. Insert brand name here. Socket. Just go steady. You gave me the thumbs up to go full whack, so. Full whack may have been this. A bit premature, let's see. The trouble with being able to feel but not see. Yeah.
Okay, guys, so thanks for watching part one of the spider removal. I know it's been a bit time consuming and a bit tedious, but the most important thing here is doing it right and ensuring that we don't break things. See you next week on another episode of Make or Break. Quick reminder, hit that subscribe button, the like button, and then the bell button so you get alerts when we release new episodes and follow us on social media too for extra stuff and more alerts about videos we're releasing, which at the moment is every Sunday and the odd Wednesday too. Bye for now.